Okay, good morning and afternoon to everyone on the call. Um, it looks like we have close to 18 folks joining us this morning and afternoon um, for East Coast folks. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone to the Civic Engagement Kickoff webinar. Again, my name is Jen Lee and I'm the Director of Community Services and Partnerships here at the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, or APCHO. Um, for your background, just, uh, APCHO is a national association of 35 community health organizations that are all dedicated to promoting advocacy, collaboration, and leadership to improve the health status and access of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and other Pacific Islanders. On behalf of APCHO, I again want to thank you for joining us for this kickoff webinar. We're extremely excited and to finally have all of you on the line and gathered in the same forum to, to talk about this unique opportunity and this initiative. Um, it looks like we have a total of 15 health centers who are participating in the Civic Engagement Initiative um, across eight different states. So we're, we're extremely proud of the cohort um, that's taken on this challenge to join us in the initiative. Um, so before I get started, uh, um, on the webinar, I just wanted to go over some of the housekeeping items and how you can engage today. Um, so what you're looking at now is an example of the GoToWebinar attendee interface, which is made up of two parts. The first is the viewer window, which is shown on the right-hand side. It could be on the left-hand side of your screen, depending on your browser. Um, that window allows you to see everything that the presenter or I will be sharing on my screen. Uh, the control panel, which is on the left-hand side, also allows you to participate in the webinar. Currently, uh, all attendees are in listen-only mode, and you'll be muted during the course of the presentation. By clicking on the orange arrow button, you can hide or show your control panel. You can also set the control panel to auto-hide or not to auto-hide by going to the View menu. Um, and so after the presentation, we'll be holding a, a question and answer session. So to participate, you can click on the blue raised hand button that's shown here on your control panel. Alternatively, we're also accepting questions throughout the presentation, and you can use the questions field to type those in and send them our way. Uh, we'll be reviewing your questions as they come in and make sure we queue those up for the Q&A session. Also wanted to let you know today's webinar is being recorded and you'll receive an email with a link to view it um, after the presentation. Okay, so I'm just going to go over a bit of the, the agenda for our webinar today. Um, if you are um, expecting Suzanne to join us, um, so she oh, okay, actually I'm just seeing Sue is on the line. So Sue's going to be doing um, an opening welcome and We'll also then talk more about the Civic Engagement Initiative goals and some of the key activities which uh, many of you have seen in your MOUs, including the staff education and training component, partnership development piece, and the list building and data management aspect of this initiative. Um, we'll also be talking about some of the key resources that are available to you um, and your staff, which include um, a landing page um, at APCHO's website for all materials, including this webinar. Um, other print materials and posters and flyers, and then also um, a really unique opportunity we have with the support of the Culture Foundation uh, for consultant support. So we'll be spending some time reviewing who those individuals are. Um, we'll also be covering some of the key upcoming dates related to the initiative um, that you'll need to note and then get into our Q&A period. I know there are a lot of questions I've received individually, so we'll try to make sure we preserve enough time in the Q&A period. So with that, um, actually we're going to transition. I want to please welcome uh, Sue Van, who's the president and CEO of the Walter H. Culture Foundation. Um, the Culture Foundation has um, really been uh, the consistent and passionate supporter of civic engagement work, and many of you I know have had a chance to um, meet part of the culture family, um, which is Susie Sands, who's also on the line, Dennis Van, and Sue Van. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sue. Uh, Sue or Sheila, are you on the line? Okay. 
So while we work to get uh, Sue connected with us, I'm going to just go ahead and continue with the presentation. And uh, as soon as she can join, oh, okay. It looks like hello, Jen. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi, Sue. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we everyone. couldn't we couldn't figure out all the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, it's all yours. Okay, first, Jen, thank you so much for putting this together. Uh, we really appreciate it. This is a fantastically important initiative to the entire Asian American, Pacific Islander, Native Hawaiian community, and we'll go into a little bit more detail why. But just to introduce ourselves, I'm the President and CEO of the Wallace H. Culture Foundation, and you might say to yourself, who's Wallace H. Culture? Well, our foundation is 15 years old, and for all of you in the healthcare business, you will understand what a blood analyzer is. In the industry, they call it a CBC, a complete blood count. I will say to you that Wallace Coulter made that complete blood count available to millions and millions of people by automating a manual blood test that used to take 16 minutes to 15 seconds. So we are of your world. Healthcare is our business. That is the world that we came from. We came from a for-profit uh, company named Coulter Corporation, who was the leader in global diagnostics around the world. So the health clinics are very personally important to us, especially important because you serve so many people that are just poor and vulnerable and have never been able to get primary care from any other source except the health clinics. I hope that each and every one of you realize the important job you have, the important role that you play, and how absolutely essential the health clinic is to the community on its own all the time. So I guess you might want to say, why, why is the Coder Foundation involved in the civic engagement? Well. I have to say that uh, until the 2010 census, this foundation did not have an Asian American program. And at this time, we are probably the biggest and the only foundation in the country that supports the AAPI community. And we support most everything in the community, whether that's the census, the citizenship, the voter engagement, the ACA. We were the biggest supporter of ACA around the country. And now we are funding civic engagement. The civic engagement initiative is, you might say, uh, experiment. We call experiments, all of you are guinea pigs in this experiment. Because people think that people who get served by the clinics may not care about the big, bigger community. Because people think that people who go to clinics and get services really don't participate in the electoral process. Well, we need to show everyone. We need to show first, to be candid, the patients themselves, your customers and your clients. We need to show the greater AAPI community that these are really important people and that they can help us achieve a purpose. And then we need to show the funders, the other funders, whether they're corporate, whether they're foundations, whether they're state or local government or federal government, that this community that gets served by these health clinics are just as important and care just as much about the American democratic process. So the experiment that we are trying is the Civic Engagement Initiative. And I'm asking each and every one of you, I know you work very, very hard with the enrollment. I know that ACA has had a huge impact on your quality of life on the hours that you work. I know about the fact that the enrollment takes two or three hours. I know about the fact that these people don't understand the insurance system and the premiums and the benefits and you have to explain everything from A to Z. So I know that 2014 has been really rough and I'm sure 2015 isn't any easier. But we need you to stick it out and do the best you can and give it your best shot because one thing that's going to happen, and I do not know if each of you are aware of this, the health clinics have been very lucky under the ACA. 13, 2013, 2014, 2015 were special years that there was a lot of financial support by the federal government 
to increase and expand the number of FQACs around the country. Unfortunately, in 2016, that support is not going to be there at the same level. And the fact that we have a new Congress, and unfortunately this Congress is not very supportive of Obamacare. This Obamacare, the health clinics, and therefore the clients that it serves, will have many things to worry about going into 2016. So we need to do our best, each and every one of us, to teach and to educate and to develop champions of the clinics from all of the patients and all of the customers and clients that your health clinic serves. We need their help to be able to advocate for their clinics. We need their help to send a message to the local, state, and federal government officials that these health clinics are essential and are needed for their survival and their success in their daily lives. So we really do need to teach something that perhaps has not been a primary goal of the health clinics. I understand that each and every one of you do everything you can to improve the primary care of each of the patients and each of the clients. So now we're asking you to do a little more, and we're asking them to think a little more beyond their own individual health care of themselves and their families. We need their help in reference to getting support for the health clinics. There will be what we call a fiscal cliff for 2016. Everyone is going to be fighting regarding the budget items. And as you know, that even if there were a equal 10% cut in all the health clinics. Unfortunately, the health clinics that serve the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander community will suffer far more. And the reason is because perhaps the existing hospitals and existing clinics, perhaps they could absorb African Americans or Latinos. But who on earth can absorb a population that needs 10, 15, 20 different languages? who can absorb all of those different cultural competencies that all of you exhibit in your special domain. So that's why we are launching the Civic Engagement Initiative. That's why your help, your support, your understanding is essential for the health clinic. And that's why we really need to develop champions of the clinics, our advocates, who can help us in the big challenges and struggles that we will have October 2015 and beyond to try to protect the very, very services that everyone has fought so hard for so many years to give to the community. So I want to thank you very much for signing on. And like I said, please feel free to ask the questions, ask the tough questions, um, inquire, because we can't help you as a funder unless we know what the issues are to help. So please be candid, please be open, and don't hesitate. And I really do hope that the culture team, that we will have an opportunity to meet each and every one of you. And thank you so much for your hard work, because I know there's plenty of hard work to come. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, so, as Sue said, we actually will have an opportunity at the end of the presentation. Sue's available for for questions uh, for a bit, and um, we just really appreciate I think the investment, the belief, and the challenge from the Culture Foundation for us to to really take this opportunity um, to address the cliff, as Sue said, and um, to to ensure that the access that we provide is still uh, available in future years. So. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, with that, I'm going to move on to just our next slide, and I think um, Sue touched upon many, many key points in the presentation today. Um, so I thought we, we'd just take a, a moment. I think many folks have asked, you know, well, what is, what are, how are you defining civic engagement in this initiative? And I, um, there are many definitions for civic engagement, but um, I think we wanted to pull out um, just a few key aspects that we feel like we have common ground across all the work that we do. Um, one is that you know that civic engagement is an effort to really work to make a difference in the lives of our communities by cultivating the knowledge, skills, and values and motivation that's necessary for our communities to make a difference. 
um, and to also continue to promote the quality of life in our communities, uh, which many of us do through advocacy and service, um, through both political and non-political processes. So I think through this initiative, we're really seizing every opportunity to, to mobilize our communities, get them involved in whether that's elections or that's education um, and other civic engagement activities that they can participate in. Um, next, I'll just go over some of the goals. These should look familiar to you from the, um, the agreement that everyone has signed, but um, these are sort of, the, I think, some of our, our top hopes for, for the initiative and what we're rising to the challenge to do is, one, to really cultivate and develop a comprehensive base of health center advocates um, and to, to leverage their ongoing support to sustain um, the mission and also the services that we are able to provide. Um, to the ANHPI community. Um, second, to also increase the capacity of our member CHC, so that's you all, to offer patients and community members more opportunities and more visibility on how they can become civically engaged and informed. Um, third is to also look at this as uh, an opportunity to establish a sustainable and scalable civic engagement model for each of your health centers. I know. Um, in some cases, I'm preaching to the choir, but I think this is such a great opportunity to elevate what you already do and to invest where you always dream to expand. So um, we really want to make sure um, you're taking advantage of those opportunities and that we cultivate a rich network here where you can do so. Um, so next, um, you know, Sue touched upon this, but I, for those of you who may be wondering, again, why, why this push for civic engagement now? Why is this important now? Um, What's at stake? Really, Sue touched upon this, but you know, again, since the passage of the Affordable Care Act, you know, all of us health centers have risen to the challenge to expand and provide quality health care services to the millions of newly insured. Um, as many of you are aware, in fiscal year 2016, um, we are facing a primary care funding cliff. Um, this only means that you know health centers would see up to 70% reductions in your grant funding. We know for many of our newly expanded access points, this is extremely critical for your survival in the future. Um, we also know that what we're trying to do is actually really address and reach out locally and nationally and regionally to all of our elected officials to make sure that the reauthorization of the Mandatory Health Center Fund happens. Um, so that we can continue to serve up to 35 million patients by 2020, which is our national challenge. Through the Civic Engagement Initiative, I think we aim to really concurrently build an engaged advocate base to address the issue of, of the primary care cliff and to continue to build momentum by engaging our community civically to be informed advocates and voters. Um, you know, there are many things at risk in addition with the cliff, including the National Health Service Corps, which provides uh, providers for your health centers in many areas, um, the teaching health center funding so that we can get more folks pipelined into primary care and the great work that community health centers do. Um, and then we know by, I think, what we're hoping to do and build this momentum is to build visibility of the voice of our communities so that we can ensure that new resources are added to the table while we preserve those that already exist for Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and other Pacific Islanders. Uh, so I'm going to move next into, you know, really some of the nuts and bolts of um, the initiative and the key activities. Um, so first off, I think partnership development is a huge um, ask of, in this initiative. And so many of you have um, already been engaged. For those of you who have local civic engagement tables, I know there's an example in Seattle and here in Northern California um, of health centers and other collaborators who are coming together collectively to strategize and leverage their efforts around civic engagement, um, to also encourage you to work if you not, aren't already with uh, different state-based efforts that are happening with your primary care associations and local clinic consortia. Um, many of us are out there uh, doing advocacy on the cliff and we want to leverage every opportunity. Um, we'll also have the opportunity through partnership development to engage and get out the vote activities. We'll be providing a lot of support. Um, we know we're in a post-election period right now, but I think we'll be gearing up for 2016 in the future. Um, and of course, working um, locally with collaborations and with us as well with the resources in the initiative to really take advantage of on-site training for your staff um, to, 
to promote the visibility of, of voter engagement resources um, in your waiting areas, your lobbies, um, in your programs at your centers, um, and other civic engagement opportunities that, that are open to your patients. I think what we're really wanting to see is, um, I think, support for um, the visibility and, and, I think, cultivating more of this culture of advocacy um, in the centers. So next slide. Uh, so, so the next, I think, caveat of key activities is really, um, as I said, the staff education and training component. Um, we really are, and I, I think um, Coulter is also very committed to seeing this as an organizational commitment um, to civic engagement, So, which is why many of you um, had your boards and your board chairs sign on to this MOU to accept the challenge to really integrate civic engagement as a core value in your organization. Um, a big part of this is uh, you all who are on the phone with us, the, the designated civic engagement coordinators. Um, we really see you as sort of the key kind of implementation line, the front line who's um, going to be informing us of, of challenges and successes um, that are working for you on the, on the ground level. Um, we also, um, many of you have already began using um, the online voter registration tool. This is um, a, a tool that you can share with, with staff that's really accessible to register to vote at any time. Many of you, I think we are currently working per a, a request um, from one of the members of the cohort to make sure that that link um, can be added to your website directly. Um, so that will be another way to promote visibility um, in the services you provide to show that voter registration is really integral. Um, and I think lastly, I think we really are looking at this uh, group and you all as a base for uh, feeding what we're calling the APCHO Advocacy Action Network. So um, many of us are working to coordinate our efforts nationally regarding the primary care cliff and I think there will be um, many actions that we'll be planning moving forward to do as a group um, to make sure that we're leveraging uh, the Enhopi voice um, in this issue, what's specific to us as, as health centers, what's unique to our communities, um, so that those stories get, get elevated. So, um, so be looking forward to, to emails, action emails from us and we'll be working closely with our policy team here at APCHO to um, synthesize those efforts and make sure we're connecting those with state efforts you might already be involved in. Okay. So the next uh, sort of key component here that I mentioned earlier is really this um, list building and data management. So I wanted to make sure that folks understand really in this year um, we are trying to have you engage and cultivate lists of, of health center advocates. Um, these are folks who may be eligible to vote or not eligible to vote, but they are willing to support issues that impact your health center and the communities that you serve. So um, these lists are actually, uh, this is sort of phase one is the way I'm looking at it, but um, really going to be the base from which um, you can engage your constituents, the folks who use your services and allies of your health centers. Um, to actually mobilize and act upon items or issues, critical issues like the cliff um, or other issues that are impacting you maybe at the local or regional level um, that are vital to your health centers. So um, it is a mobilizing and community organizing effort that we are trying to launch here. Um, the Rock the Vote online registration tool is, is part of this package of options. Um, we also will be introducing uh, the Salsa tool, which is really an emailing tool and a way that uh, you can be engaging with your constituents. Um, so we'll be having, a, a, I'll be talking a few slides from now about an upcoming training on Salsa and how to use that. Um, just nuts and bolts also wanted to share with you, this is in the MOU, but the upcoming reporting requirements for this grant um, and project um, are here, they're quarterly, um, the first report will be in March. March 16th is the due date and that can include all of your efforts pre prior to the previous election. I know many of you um, did quite a bit of work around Notre National Voter Registration Day and up until the election so we would want to hear and capture all of those efforts. Um, so those are there for, for your reference. I also after this webinar will be sending you the reporting form so you can get familiar with that um, and ask us any questions about that. Um, so next, uh, we're going to move into just some of the available resources 
uh, for you all. What we've done here, I just wanted to create um, a landing page for you all. So um, if you go to the APTO.org website, uh, we have under our uh, policy initiatives a civic engagement web page, uh, the landing page. So here, this will be sort of the home base for webinars like this today, and um, it also houses, will house materials and resources um, that are available to you all as um, the cohort at any point in time, of course, also to the broader membership of APCHO. Um, I also wanted to note, I know maybe not all of you on this call have participated in the previous uh, two webinars that we've already hosted related to civic engagement and want to highly encourage you to go back to this page and um, if you haven't already viewed the webinar we did on the fiscal cliff, on the primary care cliff, um, we have a great presentation there uh, co-hosted by Amanda Pierce from NAC. Um, so that's a great primer also for your, for your staff and boards if this is kind of not quite fully on the radar. Um, in the staff level of the organization. Um, so this is this is kind of our landing page. We'll be putting all materials here uh, as a reference point, and um, we can also note, you know, what's valuable to you as the civic engagement leads, and, and also materials that might be more meaningful for your staff. Um, some additional materials. I think we are working to develop this out, but I've received several questions from folks um, prior to the election. We had uh, a series of posters in collaboration with API Vote. Um, I think we can work on expanding the languages that are available for these posters. Um, I've heard some folks just putting these up in waiting rooms, in exam rooms, great ideas. Um, also have had some questions from folks asking about where to get voter registration forms. So um, just wanted to put the USA.gov site up here. Um, they can direct you to your local state registrar. Um, but you should be able to get voter registration forms um, from your state uh, directly through, through those links on the website. API Vote is also a great partner with Coulter and um, someone we're working with to make sure we have in-language materials and more API specific materials available. Also, one of our um, the great partners in this is Nonprofit Vote, um, who has extensive materials um, if your organizations are needing to do more education about the role of 501c3s in civic engagement and advocacy. Um, also, some, some great, uh, mostly English, um, Voter 101 tools. Um, we'll be consolidating these on the APTO uh, landing page a little bit more. There's a ton of resources out there. We want to make sure they're organized and that for those of you who are looking for in-language, which we know is very critical, um, that those are also easily accessible to you. Um, next, I wanted to, I think, just take a few moments to introduce, um, and these are some folks that you we'll have the opportunity to work with and that are a really rich resource. We feel that um, that Stu and, and the Culture Foundation have brought to the table. Um, so uh, these are consultants, um, all of whom are uh, committed to this work with the health centers and will be available um, to work with you. Um, APTO will be the coordinating entity, so we'll be speaking with each of you um, to see how these best fit your needs. And after today's webinar, there actually will be a, a survey where um, we'd love to, to kind of capture what types of training you feel like are needed at your centers at this time, and that'll help us also field requests for on-site training. Um, but just in brief, um, Mark Weatherhorn, may have, many of you may have know, uh, known in the past as the National Advocacy Director for, for NAC, the National Association of Community Health Centers. Um, he brings more than 30 years of organizing experience, very familiar with health centers, um, with staff and board training needs around civic engagement, um, particularly also the legal framework um, as civic engagement relates to FQHDs. Um, so a great resource. I know Mark has been out to some of your sites already. Um, George Pillsbury is the executive director of Nonprofit Vote. Um, Nonprofit Vote is kind of really one of the founding partners of National Voter Registration Day, and they also are the key sponsor of Community Health Vote, um, which is supported by the American Clinicians for the Underserved and NAC. Um, so really, Mark and George are great resources um, for either 
development of your programs or enhancing what you have um, or even just knowing what other folks are doing out there in the health center world around civic engagement. Um, other partners are Fair Elections Legal Network. It's a national voting rights and legal support organization that specifically works to remove barriers to registration and voting for traditionally underrepresented communities. Um, so I'm sure as we get closer to an election round, um, if there are barriers that your communities face, um, we've heard many of these from the last election um, around the availability of voter booths and districting issues, that voter suppression issues. So um, this will be a great partner to work with um, if these are barriers that your communities are experiencing. Um, State Voices is a national network of 800 state-based grassroots organizations that support um, civic engagement tables in more than 20 states. Um, so working to really connect state campaigns with national efforts. Um, so again, kind of more on the, uh, the macro level and leveraging um, state-based efforts with the national movement. Um, Crossroads Campaign, I think, um, is, a, is a partner that we'll see come in um, further on in the initiative. Um, they really focus on technical support and, and the data management with uh, VAN, which is the voter databases, which is something we'll be able to um, provide you as you use the Rock the Vote tool. We'll actually be comparing that data with the state VAN file so that you can see how many of your constituents you helped to enroll uh, or register to vote, excuse me, um, turned out to vote. Um, so just more informative for your local advocacy and to really get to know who's in your list and, and who, your, who your base is at your health center. Okay. okay, sorry if I'm talking too fast. <laughs> um, I want to make sure we have enough time for Q&A. But here are some of the key dates that we want you to please note. Um, so we apologize, this is really soon, but um, next week we are offering the Salsa database training. Um, and the registration information is here. This is um, primarily targeted for you all as civic engagement coordinators. It's important you understand this tool and then anyone else you might be working with or pulling in to help you um, manage the tool in your organization. Um, we will be sending you an email with registration information shortly after this webinar. And then um, again, uh, what we're going to do since your first um, report, quarterly report is due on the 16th of March, which is just before the um, NAC PNI meeting, um, we'd like to have a call on February 25th. I'm still working on the time, um, but to just talk about the reporting requirements. Um, and you all, as civic engagement coordinators, will be playing a key role, I think, in summarizing um, the work that's happened in your health center for your CEOs or executive directors. Um, uh, we want our the CEOs and executive directors to become come to um, the March 17th date at NAC PNI, where we'll be having a convening with them uh, to just report out on some of your your challenges and successes from from this first quarterly report, um, which will include, of course, prior to the election, so October 1 through um, March. Um, so that uh, we would like to have a call just to prep you, and if you have any questions about the reporting or things that um, you, you need to understand, given the salsa database training, um, et cetera. So. Um, stay tuned for that time release. Um, we're working across all time zones. So we want to make sure we have full participation. Um, so again, so on March 17th, we will be convening um, primarily the CEOs and executive directors at the NAC PNI um, meeting. Um, we are mostly trying to leverage um, some resources for, the, for this conversation. So it's the initial check-in, status check on how things are going. Um, and also to talk about the national landscape um, strategy that's happening related to the cliff. Um, the additional date we need, would like for you to save are May 11th to the 14th. Um, and we know this is a big block of time, but this is a key, this is API Heritage Month in Washington, you know, nationally, and then in Washington, D.C., there are several key uh, events um, that we would like to leverage your participation in, um, so to take the opportunity to have a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, the White House Initiative on Asian American and Pacific Islanders will be holding a summit that we would um, intend to have you go to and participate in. Um, and there are also, we're still putting together some of the other events that we would 
like for you to come to and participate in. It's a great opportunity to have direct interface um, with your congressional leadership as well. So um, please save the dates uh, for May 11th to the 14th and more details to come on that. So um, just in summary, I wanted to put a face to a name. Um, so uh, these are the core folks working here at APSO to support the Civic Engagement Initiative. Um, myself uh, as the project director, and then Isha Wersinga, who's our senior policy analyst in Washington, D.C. So we are coordinating much of our APSO action network um, with Isha uh, to make sure your efforts around the cliff are in sync. Um, uh, with, with what's happening in D.C. Um, and then also Beverly Quintana, who's our communications assistant, who's really our key liaison for um, some of the salsa and the, the your list management um, training. So Bev will be kind of co-hosting the salsa training uh, that happens next week. Okay. So, um, so right now what we're going to do is proceed to the Q&A period. Um, I wanted to start off because I know um, Sue, uh, Susie, and Dennis are on the line for, with us for a little bit longer um, to kind of prioritize any questions that you all may have for them. Um, regarding the initiative, um, like Sue said, any, any questions, big or small, that they can answer for you right now. And again, you can um, raise your hand or chat us the questions and we can unmute your line as well. We'll just take a minute to see if folks have questions for Sue, Susie or Dennis. And um, Sue, Susie and Dennis, you guys are unmuted right now too. So um, while we wait for questions, if there's any comments you would like to add. Feel free. Um, Shalchi, I, I saw you perhaps raise your hand. Do you have a question? You're unmuted. Okay. Uh, Perla, I see uh, you're unmuted now. Do you have a question for Sue, Susie, or Dennis, or is it a general question? Uh, Jen, is this a place where um, we were going to kind of leave you guys alone and <laughs> ask your questions? Unless they have questions for culture yeah, or me? I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to, yes. We were, I just wanted to make sure in case anyone on the line has any specific questions for Sue, Susie, or Dennis, this is the time to ask, otherwise they're going to um, leave the call and um, we, we can talk about just more nuts and bolts logistics questions sure, sure. following that. Um, yes, I, so would, yeah. I, would, I would just say maybe let me say again, uh, Jen, thank you so much for putting this together. We really appreciate the APCHO staff, I'm sure Gail and Jeff and Everybody there uh, worked hard to put this together. And I think I want this community and all of the cohorts listening that Culture has signed six contracts uh, with national civic engagement consultants that will be helping you uh, when we figure out exactly which ones you need and when you need them. They are available to help you. So just wanted to know that the, there are resources that we think we have put together that will be helpful 
And if you guys should come up with other resource needs or technical assistance requirements, please let us know. This is, uh, this is something we are all working together on. We are not expecting anybody to, um, let's say, try things out by themselves. This is an experiment, and you know, experiments, um, we learn from experiments, and we learn to do better the next time. So this is an initiative, and everybody should not hesitate to try things and see if it works, and then you can have a best practice that we can share with everybody, and then we can have lessons learned to share with everybody. So we just wanted to come on board today because it's the first launch of this webinar, and to thank Jen and everybody at App Show for making this happen, and to thank each and every one of you. I know it's going to be a lot of work going ahead. I hope that we will be able to uh, all meet all of you, either at your clinic or in a uh, national get-together. And uh, we look forward to working with each and every one of you, and thank you very much for all the hard work that you're going to do. Thanks so much, Sue. I think um, we did have one question come in. Um, I think you answered it a little bit here, but the um, question from the group was, you know, how do you define and measure a successful CE civic engagement initiative? Okay. One of the things, you know, civic engagement is pretty, pretty broad and maybe it's, um, it means many things to many people. The way culture is looking at civic engagement is comprehensive. So we call it comprehensive civic engagement. In other words, we care if people have been here, let's say, more than five years, that they should be applying for a visa. Then when they have the visa for five years, we care if they want to be citizens. And if they need ESL classes for their citizenship um, application, we care that after they become citizens that they register to vote. Then we want to educate them regarding the different issues that affect them, whether it's education or health care or job opportunities or employment. And then we would like our patients and clients to go to the polls and to show the people who are in local or state or federal government, how the issues affect our community personally. Unless we care about how, and to be candid, we can't really complain about it. Unless we care about who's in place to present the community, and who cares about the issues, whether they're immigration, the unification, they're dreamers of students who want to have the two or three year work visa. And now that the executive order that's come out regarding the parents of these children, unless we know all the ramifications of how elected officers, elected officials will vote or not vote, unless we care to show them how the community is impacted then to be candid, we have no influence. And when you have no influence, we have no voice. We have no visibility, and we have no seat at the table. So this civic engagement program is, I suppose, fairly broad, but it's really offering another service to your patients, to your customers. We have, you have the health clinics that provide a fantastic health care, primary care to millions and millions of people who have never had that kind of coordinated care. I think all we're saying is, you know what? The health clinics care about your health. They care about your family. They care about your well-being. They care about the quality of life. And that means we are also going to have them involved and offer them services that empowers them and enables them to be able to make a bigger contribution to the American democracy. So it's getting people involved, getting people caring, getting people sharing, and getting people to do the right thing when it comes to their community. So I know that maybe was a big answer. <laughs> I hope it uh, answers some of the questions. Thanks so much, Sue. Um, I wanted to check, Andre, you're unmuted. If you have a, a question for, for Sue. Hi there, yeah, this is Andrea, and also I have Tina over from them. Uh, we actually have two questions, so I'll let Tina ask the first one. 
My first question is on the salsa training. So are you guys going to give us access to it, and is it like a cloud-based um, web browser, or is it an actual like, program that we have to download? And how it's going to Okay. And then, uh, Andrea, I just want to make sure um, if your question isn't directly for Sue, I think we can answer that here at APTO. Um, I might just go ahead and let Sue, um, Susie, and Dennis uh, lead the call. Well, the other one's a technical one for APTO, too, so. Okay, great. Uh, trust <laughs> me, everybody. Jen can answer the questions. Culture can. So thank you, everyone. Culture's going to sign off now. And we'll see you soon, I hope. Okay? Thank you so much, Sue. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> um, yeah. So your first question was um, about the, the, the salsa tool, and is that a tool you have to use? Is that correct? No, we were wondering, how do we, get, like, are you guys going to be giving us access to it, and is it a program that we download, or is it on, is like, a web browser that we have access to? Hi, and this is Beverly. Um, so on the training, they'll show you how to log into it. Basically, it's an emailing tool similar to Constant Contact or um, other emailing tools like that. And so during the training, they'll show um, the trainer over there at Salsa will show you how to log in and how to manage your own contacts. And through that, um, we're hoping to kind of sync with you all, sending out action alerts. Um, and that's when we'll loop in Isha also on the policy end. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, my question is actually related to the Rock to Vote um, database. Um, I was wondering uh -huh. when, when or how often are you going to send out the raw data for the partner clinics that are signed up with it? Or are we going to yeah. get a log and actually get it ourselves? Great question. I think what we were thinking here was monthly to get you that data. Um, I could sort of pull the group separately from this, but um, when in the month uh, is strategic for you all is um, open for us to decide. But are, are, were you feeling like you would need it more than monthly? I guess that's one question I asked. Oh, monthly would be perfect. I, I okay. just wasn't sure if it was um, uh, going to be automatically sent or whether we needed to set something up. I think what we would try to do is an automatic send to you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks. Do you want to add in? Okay. Okay. Um, so any other questions? Folks can, uh, oh, okay. Um, so our next question, uh, Perla. So the question was, um, let me go ahead and unmute you, Perla. Um, Uh, your question was, um, you've been registering voters, but how can we track and monitor these for reporting later? So I know what um, many folks have been doing is, is also creating, um, whether it's in their own uh, tracking form, kind of an, an advocate list, um, which is something that you can uh, merge into or eventually use through SALSA. Um, so the Rock to Vote list um, you can receive from us, right, from, from us here at APTO. So we also have um, access to those who've been able to complete the Rock to Vote pathway to register. So that's um, one way we can we could get you that data. If that answers your question. Um, okay. Jen, I think it's important to note that we're only able to track whatever's entered through the voter registration tool online. Mm -hmm. And so I think you kind of mentioned it during the presentation. If um, folks are tracking it on their own end, so if they spreadsheet, then they would have to enter that themselves through SALSA uh, eventually because we're doing an initial migration of whatever is in Rock to Vote into SALSA but that's the only data that we would have. And so if you, if you have, um, say, advocate contacts that you took in um, by paper, for example, then we wouldn't have access to that unless you entered it yourself. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, 
one more question I see from Andrew. Um, who are, yeah, good question, who are the, the 15 APTO member clinics that are participating in, in the initiative? Um, so what I can do is, is uh, send a, a list out uh, to you all, maybe a contact list. I think it'd be great um, that we can um, kind of cultivate connections between you all as civic engagement coordinators, which is why we're looking forward to that May opportunity um, to see you all face to face. Um, so what I can do is, is send you uh, send you all the, the list of the member centers and the civic engagement coordinators for each site so that you will have that as a, as a reference. Great question. Um, See a couple more questions uh, coming in. Um, so, are we required to reach the three to four percent target for our adult patient population? Um, this is a great question. I received a lot of feedback uh, about this post deliverable. Um, I, uh, which is why we also wanted to uh, make sure we had a space without um, culture on the line uh, to, to answer this question. Um, I. We ask that you try to target that as a goal for yourselves. I think um, there are going to be a lot of lessons learned um, in this first year, and it's really your determination. I think um, knowing your patient base of how you estimate who the eligible population is. We know many folks in our health centers are not eligible um, to vote. So if you're looking at, I would I would challenge you to kind of really break down. Um, what you realistically think the, the the eligible adult population is in your center, and and to revisit that three to four percent goal, um, I think um, I think we would like to see a an effort, but also I think insight to the challenges you face and structurally as well. We know this is kind of getting a major initiative off the ground, so um, I do feel like there's some flexibility with with kind of understanding um, what your best effort is. To, to try to target that goal. So I, I do think there's some flexibility there. I will say that to you all. <laughs> um, that number, by the way, I should just share um, with you all broadly, is um, a target goal that we um, consulted with nonprofit vote about who has done a larger health center voter engagement initiative. And um, amongst their cohort, this is sort of the minimum range that their health centers were able to achieve was about 3 to 4% um, of their eligible population actually engaged in, in sort of voter lists. Um, so that was our reference point, but I, I do think um, there's a lot of understanding, as you heard from Sue, um, in really knowing what our challenges are, but we also want to push folks to, to try, try to reach that goal. Um, okay, uh, keeping up with the questions here. Um, follow up about entering in data on folks who are registered on paper. Um, when I Initially called and asked Rock the Vote, we were advised against this. Um, would we enter the info on the FALSA online tool? Wouldn't that be double entry and possibly go into a gray area of legality? Good question. I'm not sure why Rock the Vote was advising against it. Um, I see what you're saying because I think we do want to capture. Um, while you have the Rock the Vote list, I think we want to merge that into, you know, your overall advocate list. So um, I think it does add a, another step of, of capturing them because I think we can get you the Rock the Vote data. It's just that we got to make sure that that feeds into your, your salsa list. Um, so I think what I can do and what we'll note too for the salsa training, um, we're going to get really deep into the salsa issues. Um, next week. So I think what we can do is also ask um, just about this legal gray, gray ground that, um, that you're mentioning here um, and see if we can clarify where there would be a conflict, if any. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit right now. Um, and I, I think these are really helpful questions for us too, to, to know and incorporate for next week's webinar. Um, next question is, uh, do you plan to send out an email with all the save the dates mentioned today? Absolutely, we can do that. Um, you'll also receive an email with access to this presentation um, after the webinar as well. So we'll make sure we get those to you so you can um, make time on your calendars. Um, 
Um, let's see. Um, yes. So, uh, just hearing a uh, next question was um, really appreciating um, the previous question about privacy. Um, as I understand, Rock the Vote tool does not indicate that data is being stored anywhere. Is that correct? Hi, this is Beverly. No, it doesn't. The only uh, thing that the tool does indicate is uh, it gives people who are registering the chance to check off a box whether they'd like to receive emails from either Rock the Vote or App Show. And so that would be what we would be referring to mainly if um, when transferring contacts to the emailing tool because that's when that kind of acts as their agreement on whether they'd want to be a part of that email list. But I think that the the legality part um, might be separate from that also. Just and so we'll still check with that with both Rock the Vote and Salsa. Great, great question. Um, um, one clarifying question I think related to the last one. So is this is the option to um, Receive more information on the Rock Vote tool. The only way to to get credit for that person. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's not. Um, I, I think that if you have another mechanism like your 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 tracking database um, that you have internally, that's another great way to capture them. I actually would encourage folks to try to capture them on that list in addition to Rock the Vote. <laughs> yes, and even though they don't opt in to getting emails from you or from AppShow or from Rock to Vote, we do still see that uh, the entry as far as them being registered to vote. Um, so I think it's going to be clarified in next week's training that the voter registration tool is separate from Salsa. Um, voter registration tool is mostly just on the website and we'll also, like Jen mentioned earlier, try to give you um, a code to put the link on your site as well if you want. Uh, but the Salsa tool is separate. You'll be logging into Salsa on a separate window, say, and you'll see all of your contacts there. Um, as far as getting credit for it, I think we'll still see how many people you've registered on the voter registration tool. And so I think that was a question. Yep. Okay. Um, Two, we're gonna we're you're unmuted. Go ahead. Uh, two, did you have a question? Okay. Um, two, we're we're having a hard time unmuting. So if you if you want to send a question through chat, feel please feel free. It looks like we're just about ready to, to wrap up. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I just noticed it's 202. So I uh, just wanted to, uh, these are great questions, and I know we're just getting this conversation started. So um, we really hope you can join the Salsa training next week. Um, please feel free to email, email me or, or Bev if, um, if there's some, for some reason you cannot make the training. Um, but we, again, want to say thank you so much for um, participating and, and taking on this challenge of civic engagement. Um, we also want to thank you for your patience. I know that there's been some time passed since um, your CEOs received word of this project and then us getting to this implementation phase. So um, we're anxious um, to dig our heels in and get started, and so we look forward to um, interfacing with you all again next week. All right. Um, any other additional questions, please feel free to email us as well. We'll make sure we address those um, for the group next week, too. All right. Thanks so much, everyone.